Morning everyone, it's me, Tony TZW. I've had a very busy weekend with my little man Charlie and uh, we've been out to buy a little fish tank to get it ready for going out and buying some fish on his birthday in a couple of weeks. And uh, I got home to see a notification that there was an announcement on Discord from Wargaming to say that there's something new in the store. And as I read it, I just started shaking my head in disbelief there are pros and cons to this um but to be honest with wargaming i think it's pretty much all a con talk about pay to play now they want us to pay to test their ships for them let's have a look shall we so if you go into the store, as well as seeing that the uh, Tier 6 Premium Japanese Cruiser, the Maya, is there available in a standard and an XXL pack. If you go down the line, click, 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 click to ships and then go all the way along to the bottom on the second menu, you'll see there's something here called ships for test. And there are four ships here that have yet to be released. All premiums. What have we got? We've got a 7, an 8, an 8, and a 7. We've got the Hampshire, which is a British cruiser. So let's go in and have a look at that. I'll try and do the menus right. So here we go. So we've got surgical shells, so short fuse time. It's got torpedoes. It's only got AP. And you can rent this for seven days for 1,000 doubloons. Okay, so it doesn't say how long the test period is for, but it says we can rent it for seven days for 1,000 doubloons. That's a bit of an awkward front turret configuration, isn't it? Hmm, interesting. But alongside that, we've got the Tier 8 Japanese battleship, the Haizen. So there is the Heisen. It looks like they do come with a camel. We've got the Tier 8 American cruiser, the Vallejo. I'm guessing the G is pronounced like an H. That looks very much to be something along the lines of Dallas and Atlanta. Also, possibly the Worcester, sort of similar class of ship by the looks of it. Again, I haven't played this. I don't know. They may be experts out there who will give you the entire rundown about where these fit in between existing um, premium and their tech tree counterparts. But this thing's got a six second reload on it. It's got double, double guns on each of the turrets, five turrets, that's 10 guns, six second reload. So that, that to me is shouting Atlanta at me, sort of Atlanta class cruiser. And then we've got the tier seven premium cruiser, the Anchorage. So let's have a look at that. So is this going to be more along the lines of the Cleveland, um, Indianapolis type cruiser? Plenty of guns there. What's the uh, reload on those? A 15 and a half second reload. Mm, so a bit of a longer reload than some of the other cruisers, but a significant number of guns. But what knocks me about this is the fact that Wargaming are asking us to pay money to test their ships for them. Now, if you're not aware, Wargaming do have a super testers program and you apply for that and you get selected and you get early access on the test servers to the ships that are going to be part of uh, campaigns or sold in the store. As far as I'm aware, um, the super testers do have to sign an NDA. So even if somebody is a super tester, they are not likely to tell you exactly what they do in the super testing. But if wargaming want us to test something then they shouldn't expect us to be paying for this this is wrong now the only people that are going to be paying are the people that have got money so it's just swinging more and more towards the pay to play 
Now, looking at the classes of these ships, or the tiers of these ships, with it being tier 7 and tier 8, they aren't going to be cheap when it comes down to it. Now, what they have said is that they have thrown in a 1,000 doubloon coupon, right, from select cruisers. doesn't say which cruisers, and obviously you can't, you can't look at that until such time as you actually buy the coupon. So you could be dropping a thousand euros to pay for a ship to test that you've got no idea what it's like and you gain a thousand doubloon discount on you don't know what. The only ships that might be available for that discount might be ships you've already got. So that coupon could potentially be worthless. Now if Wargaming do want the community to take these ships out to test for them and provide them with some additional data so that they can analyze it and perhaps balance them better before they release them into the game then give it to us for free or at least for credits currency that anybody can earn in this game and that way you're more likely to get something other than just the wallet warriors throwing down cash to get access to something that perhaps the majority of the players can't. Now I for one will not be dropping any doubloons on any of these ships to test them. If anything, there should be a much better reward than a discount coupon for paying real money to test this. One of the things we get a lot of complaints about is that a lot of ships are released into the game and they appear not to be balanced very well. Looking at you, Ark Royal, looking at you, um, what did we have? We had the Ark Royal, we had the Weimar, they torn down the secondaries on the Lepanto as well. So there's a lot of balance and goes on after the fact. Now, most of those ships involve spending money, if not to buy the ship outright, but to get the ship as a campaign reward. So to have a ship changed after the fact is another kick in the teeth for a lot of players. I recently released a video on the Weimar because I kept a hold of it when it got moved up to tier 7 um, because I thought it's still a good enough ship and uh, as that video proves it can still handle its own its tier 7 without a problem at all. But I think this is wrong. This is horribly wrong and it's a big step in a very bad direction. So even if you have got the money that spent, what I'm asking is for you not to spend it on this. Why should we, as a community, as a player base, be paying Wargaming to test their game for them? If they want to test stuff, then they should be paying people to do it. And if they want the community to test them, then they should be paying the community, not the other way around. That's all I've got to say on this for now. Rant over, Monday morning, time for me to get cracking with work. I'll hopefully we'll see you online at some point this week, but I've got a very busy couple of weeks ahead of me. We'll see how it goes. Until then, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.